Good morning and welcome to episode 59. Today we're going to conclude our series of um, you know lectures about and interviews about success in business and how to work hard and how hard work generates success, how to turn uh, passion or art into a successful career. And we've got a great guest today. We've got Steve Darnell, who is the uh, CEO of Welder Up, and he's also the star of the Discovery Channel show, uh, Vegas Rat Rods. And so he's going to be on with us today, and um, it's really going to be a great show. We're looking forward to having Steve on. Steve, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me. I just listened to your uh, your pre-talk there it's about understanding the law. I was afraid I got the wrong number when I called. I didn't... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Understanding the law is hard for me so much, so <laughs> I'm glad I got the right number. Maybe I'll learn something today. I think we're going to learn from you. And um, you know, Before we get going, I want to thank today's sponsor. Today's show is sponsored by Pogan Pole. They're the world's oldest and leading kitchen cabinet company. Uh, if you want to learn more about Pogan Pole, please visit them online at poganpole.com. That's www.poggenpohl.com. So, you know, Steve's on today, and, and, you know, a lot of you are are new fans of Steve because of the Discovery Channel show, and, um, you know, some of you might be wondering, well, what's Steve doing here? I mean, he, he builds these awesome cars out of junk, and why is he on this show? What, what can he teach me as a business owner or, you know, an entrepreneur? And Steve's got a lot to, to teach. You know... The last few segments that we've had, we've really talked about how to model successful people, what you can learn from them, what you can take from them to make yourself a better person, a better businessman, uh, You know, whether you're a small business, a mid-sized company, or even a large organization. And some of the lessons that we're going to go through with Steve today are invaluable. So, Steve... Let's talk a little bit about you. Um, obviously, you've developed this this new fan base from the show Vegas Rat Rods, which is on Discovery Channel. But you know, you've had this company welder up for a long time, and and let's talk about what you do, and then we'll get into your background. So, what is welder up? What do you guys do? Well, welder up basically was was built just from the fact of that I was a, I was a welder by trade. Um, grew up in a steel yard here in Las Vegas. My dad owned a steel company uh, when I was younger. Um, I did, I think, 13 years in the steel yard with him. Um, and, you know, I decided to kind of venture out on my own, so I started Welder Up. And um, it was just basically a fabrication business and, uh, you know, hustling for different kinds of jobs and production work and, you know, whatever I could do to, to try to make it make it happen. Um but uh, you know, I think how it how it made its turn to be where I'm at with cars is you know 2006 when the market kind of went down. Everything went down. You know, everybody was kind of suffering, looking for work and things to do. And you know, my dad, he's a pretty smart business guy. I called him on the phone and I was like, hey, you know, um, you know, things are slowing down around here. What what should I do? You know, I mean, I'm I'm kind of like you know feeling a little guilty that I'm not really working you know, 15 hour days like I'm used to doing, you know, and he's like, well, go out and do something that you don't normally get to do when you're so busy. Well, at that point, I took that as like an okay to go and, and, you know, go and, and work on a passion. And the passion was just building these, building cars and doing hot rods and, and things like that. So I think that's where it turned as far as getting into the cars and things like that. Um, is is where I'm at today. And your your background, um, your background is is that of of an average American. You you weren't born super rich. You guys had to work for everything that you had. And if I recall, you know correctly, because I've been on your site. You you got a great site, by the way. Everybody should check that out. There'll be links to Steve's uh, site on the video portion of this, and then we'll, we'll give the uh, the link at the end of the show. But um, I was watching one of your interviews. And you talk about the fact that this whole idea of building cars came from the fact that your mom used to pick up models at, um, you know, uh, garage sales and things like that, and they'd all be mismatched pieces, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've had, uh, <clears throat> as a little kid, you know, my mom and dad, you know, are from uh, Vegas. They cruise Fremont Street. I mean, you know, they're, you know, I've heard stories over the years of, 
different things. You know, my grandpa always had cool cars, and, you know, it just was one of them things where I had the desire to want to know about cars, and, you know, since a little kid, you know, I'm out there in the sandbox with my little cars and doing things, you know, playing in the dirt. Well, uh, you know, when we were younger, we were poor. I mean, my, you know, my mom was a waitress and trying to make ends meet, and, uh, you know, my dad was still pretty young, trying to come into a business, and um, so... We didn't have a lot, but she would go to the, the uh, garage sales and pick me up these models, and, and they came like, you know, she might pick up three or four of them in a day, and they'd come, you know, with half the stuff missing in them. So basically, I just built my own models. When I was like, you know, maybe seven years old, and it was, that was fun. I, you know, I mean, it, it was creative. I, I got a chance to sit down and write be different you know what i mean even like the first time i remember going to a pinewood derby you know i i think the only reason why i joined boy scouts was just because of the pinewood derby cars you know what i mean (laughs) and um you know i that's all i did you know i mean you got all these kids dads in there with a knife carving out their cool car and doing getting it weighted just right all this stuff well you know i sat in my room by myself and built mine at i think eight or nine years old and um Mine came out with fat tires on it, little skinny gasser wheels, a blown big block in it. You know, it was creepy looking. And, you know, it wouldn't go down the track because the headers that I had put on it would hit the track as it would roll over. <laughs> so <laughs> I definitely didn't win the race, but I did win the, the best looking car of the car show. They gave me an award for, uh, for that. And I'm like, you know, I mean, I think that's where it kind of started. With, you know, all these people were like looking at this little Pinewood Derby car when I'm nine years old going, oh, that's so cool. Like, you know, it, it's so wrong that he did that because the all the way back to Pinewood Derby, there's always like, oh, get the graphite for the wheel, shave as much wood that you can off and put the weight in the right areas. And, and I'm thinking to myself, I don't know nothing about the weight transfer on this thing. I don't know nothing about the aerodynamics. How about I just build what I want and have fun with it? And I think that's where it kind of started from, to be honest with you. And, and you know, once you get a response at that age, you know that something's going on, you know? Yep. Well, you know, that's you so important. what you want. What you're saying is, is what we've been talking about over the past few weeks because the guests that we've had on, they've all taken a passion for something. And, and some of it's been, you know, more obscure. We've had actresses that are, are in horror movies. We've had people that uh, are taxidermists. And if you look at, at their professions, they're kind of off the beaten path. <laughs> But it's all about passion and, and, and something that you love to do because if you love to do it, you're going to be successful. And you're talking about going back to, to being seven years old and having a love for models. So when you start thinking about business success and what you want to do with your life, you've got to think back to you know what you love to do, not what people want you to do, not what people think you should do. It's what you love to do. Well, yeah, and I think a lot of it is... is um you know, first of all, I was led by some pretty dang good examples. I mean, my dad was a very level-headed, very, very common sense type of guy that, um, you know, he could read the writing on the wall before it even got there. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, I have a sister that's, see, she's two and a half years older than me. You know, I got to, I owe her a lot because she's kind of kicked my butt and brought me back to levelness because if it was up to me, I'd be doing some really crazy stuff. You know what I mean? So, you know, you have, but the, the thing of it is, is you have to let those people, there, there is people that you have to help, let help you a little bit to keep you level headed and, and listen to them. I mean, if there's somebody that's got a little bit of knowledge, you might want to think about listening to them to get you a little bit further ahead. Um, I, I do do what I want. And, I, and I've got where I'm at because I truly believe in what I believe in, and I'm a, I'm a hard worker, and I, and I press forward every day. But to get where I'm at today, there has been people that have influenced my life to kind of keep me, you know, common sense and, you know, think about something a little bit before you just jump in and completely, you know, Go all in because I'm one of those guys. Believe me, I'm an all in type of guy. Well, I want to talk. I, uh, I want to talk about your work ethic. Ahead. and I want to talk about your work ethic in a second, but I want to just highlight something that you said, and that's that's the purpose of this you know series of shows. You know, you, you're absolutely right. You can't do it on your own, and you need to look to other people as examples 
to to give you some guidance and understanding. And that's what I want people to take away from today's show. People should be listening to you and saying, "Oh, look at look at you know what lessons I can learn from him," and and that's that's exactly what the point of this is. But I want to talk about your work ethic because I don't know if you know, you know, out there in, in, in Las Vegas, I'm sure you see the same thing that we see here on the East Coast. You've got these these kids that are out of college, right, that just expect that you should give them a job and success should just, you know, fall on their lap. And, and you know, the key thing that, that they're missing is, well, wait a minute, I have to work hard for stuff. You know, so I think that it's it's like today's generation doesn't understand working hard. They'll see your show on TV. They'll see your awesome cars and they'll say, oh, look, you know, he, he's got it done in a few, you know, few few days. It's great. And he, he doesn't have to work that hard. So why should I? But I want to right. talk about that because that's totally not true. Well, <clears throat> I guess when it comes to work ethic, I'm like probably, I don't know, this is such a touchy subject for me because I get so offended in so many ways because you know I have worked my butt off my entire life I'm up every day I work seven days a week and if I have to work you know when we were doing that show I worked four months 16 18 hour days and never I think I took two days off in four months the the the, the thing is that's going on in our and I think in our world today is like everything that we have is so disposable that no one has any value in anything that that we have. I mean, it, there's nothing worth value anymore. So, you know, you go to, you know, uh, the local, you know, Walmart or wherever, you know, 95% of that stuff in there, you throw it away. I mean, think about it for a minute. Is there anything that you bought five years ago from Walmart that you still have in your house that you use? Because if you use it, it's wore out. Throw it away and go get another one. But my mom still got her wheat grinder from, like, 1978 that she still grinds wheat in. You know what I mean? Like, yep. there's things yep. that were valuable that still last back then. And what's happened is, our, is everybody, you know, our young kids, today, everything's become so disposable that there's no value. So there's, what happens is, as far as work ethics, there's no pride really you know what i mean and you got to pull it back a little bit and try to fight for america or just our world in general and and have some pride in what you're doing i mean there's just not much because uh you know the everything's overseas you know nothing's really here in america very much as far as america anymore so it is kind of tough you know it, it, it not to just spend lazy people in our country but it is a little tougher you know and I think that people, like, with what I'm doing is I'm doing what I want to do, and it has been a struggle. I'm telling you, it has been a struggle to get where I'm at today. You take a passion that you really, truly believe in, and you work your butt off to get there, and there are walls that you have to go around. You know what I mean? There's a lot of things that come up in your way. But I think most people give up too easy, you know? I mean, get your butt off the couch, quit playing video games, and go out and grab something that's solid, that's real, and make something out of it. Because at the end of the day, when you're done playing video games all day, what do you got? Yeah. What do you got? I mean, you got no value, none. There's nothing there. You can't walk out in your garage and see something cool. I don't care if you're building a car or you're building a boat or you're building, you know, uh, anything that has value though you know what i'm saying yeah. i think that there's just no value left and i think that that's why kids now they are just like throwing their hands in the air you know i mean you gotta think i think 80 percent of our kids coming home from college right now are just going straight home yeah you know what i mean because because there's no trade in our country left and we survive on the blue collar workers of this country and there's and and everybody wants a two hundred thousand dollar a year job well, it just it's just not going to work that way. You know what I mean? No, and you Everybody know it's really follow. it's it's funny because we've we've had in in I guess the past month or so, we've had kids that come in right out of law school looking for a job and it's really funny this one guy came in and he was dressed like, you know, like you'd think a lawyer should be dressed, right? And he sat down and he pulled out his little leather portfolio and he produces his resume on really nice crisp paper. 
And he's like, yeah, I graduated in December, uh, and I'm looking for uh, around 145000 to start. You know, and I, I couldn't help but laugh at this guy because you have no experience, and you're coming in looking for $145,000. And it's like, you know, you haven't put the time in, and, and I don't think people, today's generation doesn't, doesn't understand about putting the time in. Let's talk about the time yeah. that you've put in. Let's talk about how you've gone from, you know, a welder to now you've got Welder Up, which is a very successful business. You build awesome stuff. I mean, you're going out and you're finding scrap stuff. You're building awesome stuff. People are paying you for it. You've got a show. So let's talk about how you got from just being a welder to where you are now. Because by all accounts, you've got a very successful business. People are interested in you. That's why you've got a television show. How, tell us about the work that you had to put in. Well, first of all, I just want to say that, you know, most, our, our, our life basically, and people just forgot, my dad always said this to me, he's like, you know, common sense is not that common. And, and I've taken that since a little kid, and I'm thinking, what the hell does he mean by that? You know what I mean? Like, what, you know, but as I've gotten older, you gotta, you gotta think a little bit common sense. You know what I mean? Like, really, do you think that you're going to go to college for five years to be an attorney, walk in your office, throw a piece of paper on the ground, say 150000 a year? That, that to me, that, that you don't even have any common sense. You gotta work for something to get anything. You gotta start somewhere. And if you don't, you get no respect. You get none. And, and, you know, to get where I'm at today from where I was, oh my gosh, man, my dad is a hard act to follow. This is a guy that grew up with nothing. He had nothing. And, he has had to work his butt off to get where he's at. And, and as a little kid, I sat in the cab of that truck driving around with him, picking steel up and dropping and making deliveries and loading trucks, watching this guy, you know, develop into something later in life. And the only thing that I learned, and I, I was fortunate. Now, some people might think that I wasn't fortunate, but I was fortunate that my dad was a little rough. You know what I mean? And he expected things, and he wanted things done, and he was a hard worker. And I think to be a motivated, uh, to help motivate people, I might be getting off track a little bit, but while I'm thinking about it, you know, what I've learned from all of this is that to motivate your guys or to be to motivate your kids, I have two boys right now, and there's not a day they see me lay on the couch and they have to get up and go to work with me every day. So what that creates is habit, and they don't know any different. And that's how we should be doing things here is kids need a job. They need to know, I mean, I know it's tough nowadays with, you know, liability, lawsuits, you know, they're underage, but we need to figure out a way to start teaching these kids work ethic at a young age, because by the time they're 18, they're ruined. They're ruined. And you can't do nothing for them because they're spoiled rotten. So there's got to be a way, and I wish there was some way I could change it because I would, but to be where I'm at today, I think that I was fortunate to be able to be raised by a dad that was a workaholic. And, you know, no, we didn't go uh, on vacation. We didn't very often. I mean, I think I, he took me to Disneyland a couple times, but we didn't do the the family vacation stuff very often or go fishing or anything like that. It wasn't like that with me and my dad. It was like, get in the truck and let's go. And that's how you develop a work ethic. And in one way, it's probably bad because I think I'm still pretty bad like that. Like, I, I don't know how to really have too much fun, which <laughs> my, my sister's the same way. I have a sister that was raised the same way. So, And she's actually the one that runs my company for me. You know, So it worked out really good business-wise. But, you know, there is a certain amount that people need to go vacation and have fun and relax and, and stress, and just, you know, relieve their stress or whatever. But, you know, there's enough of that. You yeah. Know, I think people need to, cur they need to curve it back and start getting focused and get their head down and, and, um, and get back to work and like, and then wait, you know, the thing of it is like, when you wake up in the morning, are you happy that you're who you are? I mean, think about it for a minute. Are you happy in your skin? You know what I mean? Like, do you feel like you are 100% that you've given it all you can to be who you are? I mean, I'm not trying to sound like the Marine Corps or anything here, but it's like, 
you have to really question yourself and think, do I feel like I want to grow old and be satisfied with who I am? You know, I mean, yeah, it's true. You got to just keep climbing for the top and, and don't let people shut you down. I've had people shut me down my entire life. Oh, you can't do that. That ain't going to work. No, that you can't do that. Or, keep telling me no, because the more you tell me I, I, I can't do it, I'm going to do it. And when I do it, I'm going to do it like over the top. Yeah. So yeah. I always take it as a challenge, you know what I mean, in, 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 a, in a something to go, go off of. And so That's what people ahead, have to take want. from you. I mean, you, you've got to learn that because so many, so many people, so many people in business, they'll, they'll meet these challenges, right, and they call them problems, and they shut down, and that's it, and it's over, and they go out of business, you know, and you got to think, well, why is that? Is it because you really didn't love what you were doing, you were just doing it, or... Mm-hmm. You know, in life, whether whether you're a business person, whether you're just a person, you've got challenges every day. You've got problems. You've got things that seem insurmountable. But you've got to do what what's, what you're talking about. You've got to say, you know what? There's a problem. Somebody's telling me no. Somebody's telling me I can't have this job. I can't do this. I can't build this. I can't, you know, do what I want to do. And you've got to say, all right, maybe I, I've got to adjust my thinking. But you're not going to stop me. You're not going to tell me no. I'm not going to, no. you know, run into this roadblock and then just lay down dead and say, all right, I guess my dream's over. You know, if, 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 if you do that, then you really didn't care about what you were doing in the first place. And what you do is something that so many business owners just don't do. They don't persevere. They don't push through. So there's, there's just so much about your, you know, your, your characteristics. And I don't know if it's because of the way you were raised, but, man, I mean, people need to start looking at the way that you're approaching things and say, I've got to take a little bit of Steve Darnell in my life and I've got to meet these problems and, and, and say, you know what, you're not going to stop me. And that, I would imagine, right, like you're talking, when people tell you no, it's got to motivate you to prove them wrong. Well, you know, I mean, and, and the thing is, I can say anything about anybody that's either starting a business or that's a business owner. You know, I'll be honest with you, there's so many guys out there that just come in with their slacks on in their chair and they have some other guy do their job that's not the way it works because if you're the the core around your business you need to first of all set an example for all the people around you so that means you're going to work harder than anybody there okay mentally and probably physically you're going to have to work more okay and that is what that's what builds a strong team around you but you can't walk in and give another guy a job and say, okay, this is your job. You're going to take care of all these guys. I'm going to sit in my office, take all the phone calls. and do it. No. Go sit down and eat lunch with your guys. Go out there and do something with them every day. Get your hands dirty if that's what kind of work you're in. And make it look like you're part of them. Because they will, they will, it will build, it will develop a strong family. And not only that, but like there's guys that do that and then pretty soon their employees are stealing from them. They don't care about their equipment. Things are getting broke. They're deliberately breaking things because they don't like you. It, it's you got to work with your guys, not against them. I mean, that is one thing that I've learned over the years of being in the in the construction world here in Las Vegas. I lived through one of the biggest booms. Las Vegas to me has the hardest workers I've ever seen in my life. These guys are all day long, 120 degrees been over out there working and and I think that people don't know work ethic anymore and, and that's why it's so such a struggle that when you take a kid and put him out there in that world it's 120 degrees say hey go out there we need to tie all this rebar do all this work or weld all this together or shovel them rocks in that ditch they're like I'm not doing that yeah. I'll go to work at Starbucks you know or whatever not, not that and I love Starbucks but I'm just saying <laughs> it's it's an easier way of getting out of it, and then it develops. Uh, you know, our work ethic just has gone down. Yeah. I mean, we just need to. We uh, you need to get out there with your guys, teach them. You have to start from the bottom. You can't just walk in and be like, "Oh, okay, I'm Steve Darnell. I'm gonna start building, you know, hot rods today." Okay, well, what do you know about a drivetrain in a car? Like, what? Well, I don't know. Hey, Jim, what do you know about it? Well, I know that the Tire, the skinny tires go in the front and the fat ones go in the back. Okay, well, there's a start. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, you have to kind of know what you're talking about 
And also, even if you don't know everything, and I don't, I am the first to admit that I don't know everything. But I put guys around me like Justin, Dan, and Travis that do know a lot of things between all four of us. And then you develop a team. But they are there every day fighting for me because I'm there every day fighting for them. You know what I yeah. mean? They're there every day yep. working to be a part of with me. And I think that that's, that's, the, that's what I'm telling you. As far as a business owner goes, take your penny loafer shoes off and go get your work boots on and get out there and be a part of it because they do not respect you. And it doesn't matter what business you're in, even if you're an attorney. Go in and sit with your paralegal and go over it with them. Don't just give it all to them and say, hey, see you Thursday, I'm going on vacation. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. You yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And, and you know, you what, to, what like, you're saying is so important, and, and I want to talk about that because you, you have an awesome team, and they totally respect you, and, and I want to talk about that for a second. But before we get there, I just want to say, you know, all the people that have come to me over the years and said, hey, you know, I want to start this business because I want to have some time to myself. I want to have the ability to go on vacation whenever I want. I want to, you know, I want to work less, so I want to have my own yeah, business. You might, as well throw, you might as well throw that out the window. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't understand if, that. If you, if, if you want to start a business, you better figure on never going on vacation for a while. The That's ultimate right. goal at the end of 10 years you might be able to start thinking about enjoying it. But it takes a long time. And you, you see these signs on the side of the road that say, hey, do you want to make $3,500 a week, $12,000 a month? It's horse shit. Yep. You need to just go and get, get started on something. If it's something that you really love and you believe in and you truly think you can make money at it, then go do it. Yeah, and, and don't and don't think and that you know be, it's going to be you know oh it's going to be easy. I'm going to have my own company and I'm going to have all this time to myself. Well, you're only going to have all this time to yourself when your company fails and you're on the unemployment line. Then you'll have some time to yourself. But that's not how exactly. how owning a business works. I mean, you are going to put in more time. And now I want to get back to what you were talking about with respect to your team because. Look, I mean, employment issues in businesses are one of the major problems that, that employers face. They can't get the right people. They can't maintain the people, right? There's constant turnover. And, and exactly what you said earlier about, you know, when the guys don't respect you, then they're breaking your stuff. They're not doing their job. They're just doing enough to get by. And there are some exactly. massive companies in this world that still haven't figured out how to properly motivate employees but you've got a team that I mean you might have differences every once in a while but you're a solid team and you guys all work you couldn't do the things that you guys do if you weren't a team so how did no, you build no that way. Let, me, let me tell you something and I know that I don't know how many people are listening to this know anything about cars and vehicles and like what it takes to build one but we are building vehicles from the ground up in 10 to 14 days when we're filming okay impossible it's impossible there is six of us we work 16 to 18 hour days when we're filming to get this thing done okay now you might as well just told these guys hey listen we're gonna go across this coulee right here with our machine guns there's a good chance we're not gonna make it back all right well let's go that's what I'm talking about these guys will go to the end with me because they believe in me why because I am willing to die right alongside the rest of them. I am not going to hide behind not one of them. I'll be the first one that goes out. So that's the respect that you have to, I mean, if I could put it to you in a brutal way, if you could, if I could brutally put it to you, you look at these guys that go to war. And, and they're like, you know, you go even go back to the old days when my grandpa, both my grandpas fought in World War II. They didn't think they were coming back. These guys were dying for each other. And that's why my grandpa was 93 years old, laying in his bed, dying the day I was there, worried about his soldiers from all that time ago. Right. And it's because they were, they were for each other. And that's why our country was so strong back then, and everything was so solid. But now no one gives a shit. They drive through traffic, they cut you off, flip you off. They don't even care about you. They don't care if you just got T-bone behind them. They're going to keep going. They don't care. You know what I mean? Yep. So if you could take your little bit of your business 
and give it some real true value of, of passion and love to your guys and and know that if they are broke down a hundred miles out in the middle of the desert somewhere, that you are going to come get them or make it happen. Something is going to happen. Without a doubt, I would drop everything I got going and take care of them. And that is what is going to build a strong business around you because you you have to. It's deep roots. It's like building a house with a bad foundation. You're going to have problems forever. But if you're out there building this foundation that's solid, for this business to sit on forever, it'll last. And it's just common sense. I mean, that's all it is. It's not hard. Everybody's looking for the easy way out. Well, there's no easy way. There is none. I don't care. Unless you win the lottery, and then you get flooded with all this money, and it destroy, destroys your life anyway. So the only way to really make success is to put your boots on and get out there and get started and work right alongside your guys and make it solid. And, and be be good with these guys. I mean, there is so many different business aspects that people come up with to try to make people lazy. And here's what it comes down to. Get your ass out there and work with your guys, period. Yep. That's it. In any so industry, people- in any business, it doesn't make a difference. Because when, when you're the guy... Sit- yeah, when you're the guy sitting in the corner office, you know, and nobody can, can bother you because, you know, you, you're, you're doing your stuff you're planning your vacation you know nobody's going to have respect for you the fact that you make a lot of money the fact that you have this imaginary power is meaningless you're going to have to have worker drones that are there to punch a clock to get their paycheck and they don't care about you or your business and if they saw you laying in, in on the side of the road they'd walk by you know it's it's like uh i don't know if you've ever seen that movie office space you ever see that movie I think so. You know, it's like it's like a '90s, 1990s uh, era movie, but but I mean, it, it, it epitomizes the worker drone in his little cubicle, and you got the boss that doesn't know what they're doing, and they've got no right, personal right. skills, and they're not going to you know get involved in the work because that's that's the laborer's job. That's not how you build success. You've got to care about the guys you're working with, and it doesn't make a difference whether you're a dentist, a doctor, a welder, whatever you are, you know. Your guys, I'm sure, feel the same way about you as you do about them. And that's that, that, that you know, didn't just come out of nowhere. You guys created that out of something. And that's an oh, important yeah. lesson. You know, and, that, and, and these guys, you know, I mean, I've been around them a long time. I mean, Dan, you know, shit, I've been around him 20 years. And same with Travis. And Justin, you know, I was married to his sister. And I've known him since he was 10 years old. And if I was a... If I was a pile of crap, none of these guys would be around me right now. I mean, over 20 years? Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty strong, you know, relationship. And, you know, actually this last year is when we really kicked off our business and I brought Dan on and I brought Travis on and, like, and Justin. And we made a solid group of it. But here was the deal. They seen me struggling for all those years by myself trying to get where we're at. That they knew that when I called them on to be with me, that I was going to make sure that things were going to happen. And, you, you know, I'm not just throwing it in the air and be like, hey, do you guys want to come over and try to do this show on Discovery Channel with me? They already knew it was going to happen. Like, they already knew that they believed that I could make it happen. And and that's what you need to be a leader. You have to, you have to like, sacrifice yourself, your relationships, your home life. Everything is sacrificed to build that business and to make it, if it's what you really want, then you need to set it in your head and go, okay, these are the sacrifices I'm going to make. Yeah, you might you might wind up divorced. I did. You know what I mean? Um, but me and my ex-wife, we, I, I talk to her three days a week, tell her I love her every time I get off the phone. My boys are important to both of us. You know, we keep it real between each other. It didn't work. I'm chasing something that is something that is not normal for a human being to be doing. This is not a normal thing to be a celebrity on a, you know, Discovery Channel. Right. I mean, this is not something you do every day. So it is life-changing. And I think no matter what you're doing, it's life-changing. And I'm not saying run out and get divorced so you can go, per, you know, do your <laughs> thing in your life. But I'm just saying those are sometimes the sacrifices that, yeah. that have to be made or you have to do to get where you're going. And it's what's most important to you, you know what I mean? And not that my ex-wife wasn't 
important or my children because they're very important. But things deteriorated because what you do is you start to focus on things and she's focused on things and then it, it kind of just pulls you apart. But we understand each other and it's all good. But what I'm saying is there is some major sacrifices that need to be made and I'm talking your stress level is going to go up and you're going to be, there's going to be depression parts where you're up and down, up and down, up and down. And just toughen up, you know? I mean, there's so many times I'm thinking, geez, do, do I need to go see a counselor? Do I need to get on some kind of, uh, you know, happy pills or something like that? It don't work that way because if, you're, if you are impaired in any way, your focus and your self-driven is over. Yeah. Because that is what that stuff does. It, it basically slows you down <laughs> and it, it slows you down from driving and driving and driving. You know what I mean? And you got to think, you know, back in um, 1940 when they were out here drilling holes in the rocks with a freaking hammer trying to find silver and gold. Oh, I'm depressed today. I think I'm just going to go home. There was none of that shit. Yep. I mean, these guys had to work seven days a week just to feed their family. You know? I mean, when they're out there on the boats in the middle of the ocean, you know, my, you know, like my grandpa, they didn't have, like, Prozac or whatever for them to make their day feel better. You know? I mean... No, <laughs> it's true. Get it's true. And get, get dirty and toughen up. And, and and be a leader and be focused and you can't be focused when you're impaired. You got to yep. just go out there and do it. And it sucks because there is days. Let me tell you, there is days that I wake up and I'm just I'm I'm depressed on. And it's because of the amount of stress, work, the shutdowns, people telling you, you can't do something and you know, you know you can and there's stuff that's out of your reach that you cannot control that depresses you because I'm a very hands-on type of guy and if, if I see a problem I like to walk out and just fix it but when you're dealing with a major network or a production company and you cannot touch it and you don't have any say on what's going on it's it's a curveball it's tough but you got to keep going forward and you got to keep shocking them and knowing them that you, you're going to do it and you're going to do it good and you're going to do it better than they thought you know yeah and, and, and you can't that's what you got to do you can't look for the, for the crutch in your life. You can't look for, you know, putting blame on somebody else. You can't look for alcohol. You can't look for medications. You can't look for the excuses because it, you're, you know, you're absolutely right. It it doesn't help you with your focus. It doesn't make things better for you. And I'm not saying that people that have uh, mental conditions shouldn't take medication. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about those guys like you who are working hard and are under stress. I mean, I, I feel the same way, you know, e even though you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a lawyer, it's a different story, but I feel the same way because, you know, I care about my business. I care about my company. And you have those sleepless nights and you have those people that are telling you don't do it. But, you know, the answer isn't go run out and look for a distraction. Don't run out and, and, and you know, sit yourself down at the movies. Don't go to a bar. Don't go to the doctor and look for medication to help you. Say, wait a minute, you know, I'm going to do it, believe in yourself, and I'm sure that you'll agree with me that there are times when you don't, you know, necessarily have a lot of, of um, positivity, but you just, you make it happen. You know, you just say, you know what, I'm not sure if I can do it, but I'm going to try, and I'm going to do my best, and you motivate yourself. You know, the self-motivation is so important in, in a successful business. I'm telling you, and I think that you know, with what I've got going here, there was, you know, with Discovery Channel, I, there, I didn't know anybody in the camera world. I didn't know anybody about reality TV. I didn't know anybody about none of this. This was all purely on the fact that I built some, some crazy looking cars out of junk I had laying around the place, and I would put them on my truck and drive them by myself, clear the hell to L.A. or Phoenix or around Montana. It didn't matter. And show these things off and get, get it started up. And wait, you know, I mean, it cost me a lot of money, but I believed in what I was doing, and I thought there would be a, a light at the end of the tunnel, and it's still not there. <laughs> this is the first year out. This is the most brutal year. You're doing shit for free. And talk about getting a beat down. I mean, if you don't think that I don't think of that I'm depressed at least a couple days a week on something, you're wrong. But that is part of being in this. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. Like, Like, there is a certain amount of where you need to shut down and I don't and I need to and I know I do I need a, I need a week to go sit on the beach in San Diego 
and just stare at the water till I feel better. I really do. I believe that that's therapy. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I've never been a vacation type of guy, really. I'm kind of, you know, not really, I, I need to learn more about it. But the, the fact of the matter is, is this is not an easy thing. And if you can't do it, then go work for somebody. Because it's not something that you better be willing to sacrifice a lot of stuff, depending on the level you want to go. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, you know, it doesn't matter. How big, how big do you want your landscape company? Do you want to just go mow lawns or do you want to blow it up? Yep. You know what I mean? How big do you want your plumbing business? Do you just, you and one of your guys want to go do it? That's cool. That's simple, easy, nice way to make a living. Is it going to make you huge money? Probably not, but it's going to make you a living. But you might be comfortable with that, and that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, well, you, you got to know yourself, right? There's nothing wrong with people that, you know, I, I, I'll say, you know, you're a time card puncher, but I, I don't mean that in a derogatory fashion. If, you know, there's, there was a guy that I knew, right, who worked for a company, and when he knew that, that we were launching our own firm years ago, he said to me, I'd never want to do that. You know, I'm happy going to work, punching my card, getting paid, coming home, leaving work at the office. There's nothing wrong with that. I have respect for people like that because at least they're admitting that, hey, this isn't what I want to do. But you've got to know yourself because if you're not willing to commit, then don't go start your own business because it'll fail. No, and, and the thing of it is, is really, to be honest with you, starting your own, your own business almost develops off your work ethic where you started. you got to think for a minute. If you're out there and you're digging holes for trees, right? I mean, simple, simple. You dig three or four holes, you make, you know, five, six hundred dollars, whatever. You're like, you know what? If I paid a guy a hundred of my four or five hundred, I could dig twice as many holes. So then you got this guy and you're paying him and then pretty soon you got three or four guys and you're digging, you know, ten, ten, fifteen holes a day and you're making now you went from, you know, a couple hundred bucks to a thousand dollars a day. Well then you're like, you know what? I think I'm gonna go out and give me a piece of equipment and then we'll start grading. And you know what I mean? It's like yep. It almost self-develops, but you have to be the first one to dig the first five holes. And while you're digging them holes, you are thinking of a way to make something easier and make it better and make more profit on it. And that is a self-developing thing on work ethic, and that's the problem. No one is willing to dig that first hole. Here's a shovel. Dig a hole right here. You're like, go get a backhoe. I'm not digging that. Yep. You know that's I mean? true. Like, you, have, you have to start somewhere. And... And that's how business are developed. I mean, my dad started his business with an old beat-up truck and a pair of pliers. I mean, this guy had nothing, you know? And he wound up being a successful steel business here in Las Vegas, and, and um, he's, a, he's a hard ass. I mean, you know, he, he drove it into me and my older sister. I mean, we, we're kind of the same way. I mean, we don't know really how to have fun because we're such workaholics. I mean, to the point where it's almost too much. But you but, have fun. You have fun doing what you're doing. The stuff you guys do, I mean, everybody that's listening or that's downloading this episode and listening later, you, you got to go check out Steve's site. It's it's welderup, W-E-L-D-E-R-U-P.com. The stuff that's on the, the site, it's amazing. I mean, the stuff you're you're building, it's crazy. And and it's so creative well, and so unique. And you got to see what these guys are putting together. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the cool thing, I mean, if, if we want to talk about Welder Up for a minute and, like, what I'm doing, it's it's basically just a extension of what I'm thinking. And I'm, you know, people are like, oh, dude, you're an artist. Well, you know, I'm thinking of an artist like Picasso, you know what I mean? But then you get thinking <laughs> about it, you're like, well, you know, these cars are like the Picasso painting. They're one of a kind. They're, there's not another one on the planet. They're They're... They are what they are. Whether you like them or hate them, I don't really care. It's what I feel. It's what I see. And and I think that it's good because it's made enough attention to land me a spot on Discovery Channel. So I think that it it's okay to do what I'm doing, and it makes people happy. And it's a motivation skill for, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I'm sitting here in front of, I don't know how many people on TV right now, trying to set an example for people. I mean, I come across on TV pretty much how I am in my shop. I mean, you know, I'm not going to hide nothing on TV. I'm not going to, you know, we have to make TV. That's just a, that's just a given. There is a certain amount of TV you have to make, but 
I work every day with them guys, and we work all together, and they believe in my vision. And now they're learning to know when to stop and go, hey, what do you think, what do you want to do right here? Okay, well, this is what I'm thinking. We need to do this and that and, you know, make this look cool. Um, you know, and the team that I got around me right now are really starting to develop to, I mean, it's kind of crazy because I feel like Charles Manson, you know, they're all kind of starting to believe in what I'm seeing. You know what I mean? <laughs> they're drinking and, the Kool-Aid. I mean, that's, kind of a bad, <laughs> that's kind of a bad way to say it, but you know what I mean? They believe in what I'm doing now and they and I know they question me still today I mean there's things that they're like holy crap do you really want to do that but okay let's do it but look you know like Dan for instance you know Dan's a little older he's like my older brother he's kind of a mentor to me you know I mean I look up to him to give me like give me the real answer Dan like what do you really think you know what I mean because he'll tell me you're a dumbass you know what I mean yep. that's not going to work but then he stops and goes how about we do it like this? Okay, now this will work. And then I'm like, okay, I can mold with that. And then, you know, of course, Travis is an artist, and he's very good, and he just comes in and he's just like, okay, let's just completely tweak this out like that. Like, I almost have to pull the reins back on Travis sometimes, you know what I mean? And that's what I love is, like, I have to actually pull him back. You know what I mean? And then yeah. you got, like, Justin that's just a, just head down all day type of guy in there working, good attitude. You know, he is my, he's, he's the uncle to my, my, my son. I mean, I, I love him to death, you know, but he's just turned out to be such, you know, he's 26 years old, and he's turned out to be one hell of a good man. He's a family man. He's got two little daughters, you know, a wife, and he manages all of that, and he takes care of stuff. And, and I couldn't be prouder of all of them, you know what I mean? So they know that, and, and I think that that fuels them for me. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, I respect them. And they know I need them because I can't do this on my own. Not not at this level, you know. We're, you know, we're building cars. and That's so important what you just ahead. said. You know, you, you said you can't do it on your own. Now, I know because you and I talked, you know, prior to the show, I know that you're not necessarily a computer guy, but your site's awesome. Your site works. It's great. It, you know, you've got these videos. I mean, you it's, it's a well put together, you know, site. And I know well, that... That you're getting help from people, and that's so important. Well, I mean, I, I cannot tell you how important my sister is on this whole thing, because this wouldn't happen without her. She's not paying because you to say right. this, is she? I, no, <laughs> no, she's probably going to slap me for it later. <laughs> but I, I, I need to tell you that I cannot. You know, I am, a, I am, I am basically the tool. Okay. I'm the one that goes out and gets down and gets all this stuff done. But let me tell you something. On a business, I have so learned that if you don't have someone that is running your business that you can trust, you're screwed. You know what I mean? Yep. Especially if you're like me, because I'm telling you, I barely made it out of high school. You know, all I wanted to do was uh, drive around and chase chicks in my truck. And, <laughs> you know, I worked since I was a little kid, so I always had a job, but... I was on my, I was kind of doing my own thing, you know, when I was in, in a sophomore and junior in high school, I was down doing my own thing. So my sister now ran my dad's business for 20 years. She's smart as you can get. And if it wasn't for her to structure me and my business, I'd be a basket case. So realistically, as far as the work ethic and starting a business, that's where I started. I started with that first hole, and I dug the first five by myself. Okay? Then I started adding on more stuff, and as I got more employees and I got more jobs, then you have to put somebody in there that can take care of your business because if you don't, you're screwed. Yeah. And if you're like me, I wouldn't have made it because but, – but I knew that the smartest thing for me to do, common sense again – was to call my sister that had ran my dad's business for all those years, that that was made it happen, made the business a success with him, to help me make a success out of this. And that's exactly what I did. It's been a struggle. I mean, she is my sister. I love her to pieces, and we have, we have up and downs, and it's been hard on her. But the truth of the matter is that she is a passionate person and works her butt off, and she challenges herself every day i think she's worse than me to be honest with you so that is the other half of the business 
that people don't understand. You can't just go out and build a car and say you make $10,000 in profit, and you're like, eh, you know what, I think I'm going to go buy me a boat today, you know? My sister would kill me if I did something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you can't do that. You cannot take your profit and go squander it for, you know, vacations and stuff like that. Like, I'm afraid to even call her and ask her if I can get my kids a dirt bike. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's one of them things where you have to sacrifice so much for so long and make sure that your company is flush and it's feeling good before you take a paycheck out of it. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's what her and I are both doing right now is we're trying to flush the company and get it feeling better because you cannot use it like it's some kind of a, um, you know, money tree. I mean, yeah. you know, you, just because it puts down a hundred dollar bill every day, doesn't mean you got to walk over there and pluck it off. Yeah. Let it grow and put out like 10,000 a day. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and then, you know, then take a little bit. Don't just rob it out because that's what ruins businesses, you know? And I mean, and that's why there's so many bankruptcies and things that are going on today is because people are, are abusing and using the crap out of their business till it, well, you know what? Screw it. Just shut it down and start it in another name. Yeah. Okay, well, who's going to pick up that debt now? You know what I mean? Like, no one cares, you know? It's like, yep. just have some have some like tooth to you and and some backbone and say you know what i'm going to make this a solid little business and there is sacrifice to be made everybody wants to drive a 550 bins like the next day it don't work that way you know i still i got a little beat down 57 chevy sitting in my driveway right now you know i mean that's what i drive i drive an old truck with 300 and 15,000 miles on it every day this is no kidding so what i'm saying is you know roll the money back into your business Help your guys out. Get make sure they're taken care of because without them you got nothing. And you gotta you know, these are the these are the sacrifices I'm telling you. Not only is it stressful and disappointing sometimes, but you're gonna drive the shittiest stuff around there and you're gonna make the most sacrifices to make it work. You know what I mean? Yep. Absolutely. So that is that's important. And and I think that most people just think because they have a business that they could go out and buy them a five fifty Mercedes the next day or a brand new Dodge truck or whatever they want. And they're like, oh, well, I'm starting a business, so I'm going to go buy me a brand new Dodge truck and finance it. Don't do that. Go get you one that runs good, that you're going to use for work, and work your way up to that new Dodge. Don't just go buy it today. You know what I mean? Because you're going to start a business. I got a business plan. I hate it when I hear somebody say that. Yes. I have a business plan. Okay, well, you've already screwed up because we're going to sit here and talk about a business that's not even developed yet. What you need to do is go out and develop it first and then get a business plan. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's no sense in talking about a business when it isn't even started. You know, go out there and try it and get it going and then turn it into a business plan. That's where I'm at now. I dug the first five holes. Now I got my sister involved in taking care of things that I don't even know what. Right. To be honest with you. <laughs> Thank gosh. But you need then, that help. You, you know, need other people to help you because <laughs> you can't do it all your, yourself. Well, if you want to grow... If you want to grow this business and you need to, you want to, you want to make some serious money, you're going to have to put the people in there that did actually go to college maybe to learn, mark, you know, marketing or booking or you know, just learn yeah. how to take care of your books and your money. And thank goodness I have my sister because, you know, I just told her I go, hey, as long as you give me a gas card, I'm good. I don't even need nothing. I've lived so long with nothing. I just need a gas card. I don't even care no more. You know, like keep it off. <laughs> you know, I don't care because that's really not why I'm doing this anyway. You know, like I didn't, I didn't, you know, I'm not, I just want to do it because I love it and yeah. I want to show people and, you know, yes, I do want to make money at it and I want to be successful, but, but I do it because I want to do it and not because I have to do it. And that's, that's something that is a fine line because when you take your hobby and you turn it into a, a work of success, it gets stressful, man, because all these people get in your way. Yep. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people that you have to answer to. And pretty soon, what you are doing every day on your hands and knees and they're working and making it happen, now you're kind of pulled away because you're answering questions for so many people to try to keep this business rolling. And it, it's a, it is a, oh man, I'm going through, I'm going through growing pains right now with this, with this business. And it's tough. I mean, I should tell you, I mean, next year we should get on the phone again and I can tell you more about what how it went down and how it happened, you know? It's yeah, bad. absolutely. I mean, it's but, it's really, I think that, that people need to follow what you're doing because, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, we're running out of time and I want to make sure that we have enough time for you to give people information where they can contact you. But I just want to say that 
you know, you are the epitome of of the American success story. You know, the the hard working guys that used to come out of the you know the steel mines in, in in Pennsylvania that you know worked hard, took something, believed in it. They made a life. They made a success, and that's all gone. So you're kind of a throwback, and and I think it's so important for people to see. Hey, look, you know, here's a guy that has that old school ethic, that has that old school understanding. I mean, you didn't go get a marketing degree. You didn't go get a human resources degree, but you can probably teach people that have 20 degrees more about building and maintaining and motivating a team than than they can. And it's so important. So I, I think that it's invaluable what you've said today. And I think that people should follow along you know, with you to see you as you develop, because it's going to be critical for for you know people to learn how to make uh, make something like what you're making. So it's it's a great thing. I want to let you talk about where people can find you, how they can get in contact with you, because I want people to to contact you and and talk to you, um, and, and learn from you. So where can people contact you? How can they they reach you? Well, the best way to do it because my phone is just a complete train wreck right now with Facebook and Instagram and text messaging. I got like 75 text messages I haven't even responded to on my phone because it's just overwhelming. But the best way to do it is just go to welderup.com. You can email us or you could just, um, you know, try to call. Um, My sister, bless her heart, is the one in the office trying to take care of all this. So if they don't get right back to you or I don't get right back to you, it's just that we're, we're just, we are in growing pains. I, I'm not hiring 10 people to, to do this. This is just a two-man band, basically. And my brother-in-law is up there helping her out. And I think some days he wants to come down here and knock a hole in my head. But <laughs> he, loves, he loves it enough to where he's hanging in there. But what I'm saying is, um, you know, it, we're trying. We're trying to get back to people. But if you go to welderup.com, get on there. While you're on there, will you please buy a shirt for my sister? It'll make her feel so much better. <laughs> There's awesome shirts no, on the site, by the way. I mean, the the clothing's really cool. So I, I think every, I'm going to go buy a shirt. I think it's awesome. Yeah, we got some pretty cool shirts and some swag and different things. And you know, if you if you have a chance to go by and um, get on the site and check it out, and and um, you know, if you want to grab a couple of shirts, or whatever, it's it's pretty cool. And and like, if there's anything to close out, it just I think that. I think that if anybody's a business owner that's trying to start or get going or they're having struggles with their business, get out there 90 and, guys seconds. and use common sense. You know what I mean? You don't need the $55,000 truck to start your business. I got, a, I got an 04 Dodge with 320,000 miles on it that I drive every day. You know what I mean? I hear and you. Not only that, but your employees are looking at you like, oh, it must be nice. You know what I mean? Oh, it must be nice. You know what I mean? It's, yep. It's like you need machinery or you need things in the shop and you're driving a $50,000 truck. It don't work that way. You know what I mean? 60 if you're bad seconds. If you're a business and you can't have all that, it will come. Yep. It's just you have to start somewhere and you can't just go right out there and look like you're a big baller because that, that involves lunchings and brunches and all this bullshit that you don't need. You need yep. to just get out there and work all day. You know what I mean? All right, Steve, and, um, I don't, I don't mean to cut you tough. off, but we're running out of time. We've got 30 seconds left. I want to thank you so much for being on today. You're going to be back because we've got a ton of questions uh, that people want answered from you. So, you know, you're going to be back on the show. We'll, we'll schedule that. We'll get you back on so you can answer some of these questions. I want to thank you. It was a really, really great show. I think that people can learn a tremendous amount from you. So... Uh, we'll be talking in the near future, but I want everybody to go to welderup.com. Ten seconds. And uh, everybody should remember that there's power in understanding the law.